Hi, this is JP from Not the Lights Over Arkham. In this hero pack focus, we are looking at the new Drax hero pack for Marvel Champions the card game, so let's get started. So, Drax is not possibly my favorite hero, at least in the comics or in the movies, but um, let's see what the Drax's hero pack is all about. So, we start by looking at the alter ego side of Drax. So Drax has a 4 recovery. Outlaw trait, forced response. After you change to this form, remove all vengeance counters from Drax. Heal 2 damage from him for each vengeance counter removed this way. Hand size 6 and hit points 14. So right away, um, I'm really liking this uh, heal ability because uh, as we look at the hero side, uh, Drax accumulates these um, vengeance counters, so you basically can just go into alter ego, heal, and do this after you have attacked or thwarted in uh, hero mode. So you don't have to be necessarily use the recovery, but if you need, the recovery is also really good. So let's flip to the hero mode side. So Drax has one fourth, one attack and two defense. Uh, at first glance these stats are horrible, but let's uh, read the card. So Drax has the guardian trait. Drax gets plus one attack for each vengeance counter on him. Okay, so uh, you can accumulate the vengeance counters and uh, your attack at least gets bigger while you're doing that. So response after the villain attacks. Drax place one vengeance counter here, to a maximum of three if you cannot draw one card. Hand size four and hit points 14. So uh, you can get to uh, four attack, which is quite quite high, uh, higher than, for example, Hulk. And uh, also you suffer from the low hand size, but if you're accumulated enough vengeance points, you are getting more cards into your hand whenever the villain attacks you. And this is when the villain attacks, not when a minion attacks, so that means you have to be careful not to mess that up. And uh, yeah, uh, 14 hit points is quite good. You can take a beating and stay in hero mode and utilize your vengeance points before going back to alter ego to heal. So let's continue to the signature cards and first we have the Mantis uh, ally. So Mantis ally is a 2 post ally, 2 toward 1 attack and notice uh, Mantis has 2 consequential damage when attacking. So you are not maybe attacking that much with Mantis, maybe thwarting but action exhaust Mantis and deal 1 damage to her, deal 3 damage from an identity. So the full focus of Mantis might be just to heal Drax or heal other identities and not do anything else. And uh, Mantis can be committed as a wild resource. So I think Mantis looks quite good for Drax at least. Next we have an event. Uh, there are two copies of this event in the deck, so it's uh, Fight Me Coward. It's a zero cost event, hero action, ready your hero and draw one card, the villain attacks you. And it can be committed as a physical resource. So uh, right away, mm, this combos really well with Drax's gaining vengeance points for when the villain attacks you. So you play this, ready your hero, uh, get a card and possibly get another card if you already have the vengeance points gathered. So a really, really decent card for accelerating the vengeance points and card draw. Then we have Intimidation. It's a one cost event. Uh, thwart, traded. Hero action Thwart. Remove X threat from a scheme where X is equal to your attack. And it can be committed as a mental resource. So uh, this is the thwarting card of this uh, signature. Uh, set. There are two copies of it in the deck and uh, you basically need to have vengeance points to get most out of this card 
otherwise it's quite quite uh, unimpactful but seems okay with Drax's set. Uh, then we have a Knife Leap. Uh, knife Leap is a 3 cost event. Skill traded reduce the cost to play this card by 1 for each vengeance counter on Drax. And if we remember, Drax can have 3, so this can be 0 costed if you have 3 vengeance counters. Uh, Hero Interrupt, when you make a basic attack, you get plus 5 attack for that attack. That attack gains overkill and piercing, and this can be committed as a physical resource. Okay, so this is a good, good attack card or an attack event when you have the vengeance points gathered and there are uh, two copies of it in the deck. Next we have a parry. So parry is a zero cost event. It's a defense traded event. Hero interrupt defense when you would take any amount of damage prevent X of that damage where X is equal to the double of your attack and it can be committed as a energy resource. So if you have three vengeance counters you are negating six damage so this is quite good at keeping uh, Drax healthy even when getting extra attacks from the villain. So there are two copies of this in the deck and it seems like a good defensive card. Next we have Payback. Uh, payback is a zero cost event. It's an attack event uh, or attack traded event. Uh, hero response attack after the villain attacks you deal X damage to the villain where X is equal to your attack and it can be committed as a energy resource. There are two copies of this in the deck. So um, again get vengeance counters and this card will get really good. And uh, next we have our first upgrade. So it's Grax's uh, knife. Uh, so it's one cost upgrade, restricted, max two restricted cards per player. While in hero form, Drax gets plus one attack and it can be committed as a wild resource. So another way to boost some of your other cards by getting plus one attack without the vengeance points. So a really good card and I'm actually putting the next card next to this one so we have the Braxis other knife so it's a one cost upgrade restricted max two restricted cards per player uh, both of these are a uh, weapon traded and while in hero form Drax gains retaliate one and uh, this also can be committed as a wild resource so Instead of having two in the identical daggers or knives, uh, we have one that gives you plus one attack and one that gives you retaliate. So I think this is a good choice because otherwise you would be boosting your attack way too much. So maybe this was a balancing act to not make the other set cards too powerful. But I'm liking these uh, knives. They, they are cheap and they do decent stuff. Uh, next we have an, another upgrade. It's uh, one cost upgrade. It's by the mastery. It's a skill traded card. Hero response after Drax makes basic attack draw one card. And it can be committed as a mental resource. So uh, you really want to get this to the table. And whenever you are attacking, you are drawing cards, which will accelerate your deck, make you play more cards and uh, Make you build faster and stuff like that so a really really good upgrade then we have a two cost upgrade it's two stubborn to die it's a condition traded upgrade hero interrupt when drax would be defeated instead set his hit point dial to four change him to alter ego form and remove this card from the game and this can be committed as a mental resource so uh, you can play really uh, close to dying with Drax and take a lot of punishment and have this in play and then if you happen to get an attack you can't uh, negate the damage uh, you can save yourself with this so I, I'm really liking this card especially in true solo where you the game is over if you uh, lose one, one hero or your only hero so 
really liking the flavor of this card. Okay, so those were the signature cards for Drax, so let's next look at the uh, protection cards. So Drax comes with the protection aspect uh, pre-built deck. First we have the new ally Martyr. Uh, Martyr is a 4 cost ally with 1 4 and 2 attack. Uh, Guardian traded, 3 hit points uh, response after Martyr takes consequential damage from performing an attack. If that attack defeated an enemy, give her the tough status card. Okay, and can be committed as a energy resource. So, you want to finish uh, minions or stuff like that uh, with Martyr, so you basically get more uses out of her. So, uh, for cost is also always a bit high for allies, but I think this can be a good one. Uh, especially if you can, well, uh, you can you can attack, defeat something and get the tough and then defend the villain phase. So that is actually quite, quite good to keep uh, Drax in play better and not take that much damage. So that is a decent ally. Uh, next we have Moon Dragon. I have seen this uh, card pop up in the forums. There's a lot of talk about how you best utilize this ally. I haven't read it before that much, so uh, it's a 3 cost ally with 1 power and 1 attack. Guardian traded, 2 hit points only. Action, exhaust and discard Moon Dragon. Choose a minion, that minion attacks another enemy of your choice. And it can be committed as a mental resource, so... Okay, well, um, interesting. Um, there, there must be some really interesting combos to uh, crowd control minions, so you could uh, use this and hit a minion with another minion to, for example, defeat a guard minion. So, and there are some some minions that have quite high attacks, like three or something like that. So, this could be interesting. Uh, I'm not really liking the two hit points, but uh, I think the Moon, Moon Dragon comes into play, you maybe use her once and then use next turn her ability. So, yeah. Well, the verdict is not out yet for this card, so we'll have to see it in play. Next we have a reprint of Counter Punch, so I'm not going into detail on that. And then we have Deflection. Of course, there are three copies of this. Oh yeah, there were only two copies of the counter one, so not a full set. So deflection is a two-cost event. Uh, skill traded, hero interrupt. When an identity would take any amount of damage from an attack, grant up to five of that damage. Discard cards from the top of your deck equal to the amount of prevented this way. Okay, uh, so an interesting way to neglect damage. And it can be needed as a mental resource, so... Yeah, it, it will cycle your deck, but at least you're not taking damage and... Uh, well, I think I need to see this in uh, play before I can judge it better. Next, uh, we have Hard Nox. So, uh, Hard Nox is a 3 cost event. There are, of course, 3 copies of this in the deck. So Hard Nox is a 3 cost event, attack traded, hero action attack, deal 4 damage to an enemy. If that enemy is defeated by this attack, give your hero a tough status card. So this actually is really, really interesting. So there are a lot of minions with 4 health, so this is a powerful way to get rid of a guard minion with 4 health, for example. Uh, get a tough status card for the villain phase. So for your hero, so really interested in seeing this card in action, and it can be committed as a physical resource. So next we have a Leading Blow. A leading Blow is a zero cost event tactic, created hero interrupt. When your hero makes a basic attack, discard the top card of the encounter deck to reduce your hero's attack for that attack by the number of printed boost icons on that card. If that attack still deals damage, ready your hero. So you want to have a really high attack value, play this and hope for low uh, boost icons. So 
so you can attack and then ready. So I'm really interested in this card. It, it's a gamble, but it, it, there there might be like for multiplayer you could have like a Scarlet Witch or something like that in as as an um, other hero in in play. So you could have some ways to see what cards are on top of the counter deck or uh, spider woman actually can can check the <laughs> top card so you could combo with that in multiplayer so uh, there are plus three copies of this and this can be committed as a physical resource so uh, really interested in seeing leading blow in action really liking these new uh, uh, protection events and then we have the last new protection event, which is Subdue. It's a one cost event, Hero Interrupt. When an enemy initiates an attack, the, that enemy gets pl uh, minus three attack for that attack. And it can be committed as an uh, energy resource, of course, full set of three here. So, uh, another way to um, combo with Drax's um, playstyle of getting a lot of attacks from the villain and uh, one way to reduce the damage taken so um, looks like a good car for Drax's pre-built deck and for other decks also maybe. Uh, last cards for the protection uh, aspect are two copies of Indominable which are a reprint so won't go into detail that much. Then uh, we have our pre-built basic cards we have Gamora. So Gamora is a 3 cost ally with 1 fart and 2 attack, 3 health and a guardian trait. Play only if your identity has the guardian trait. Hero responds after Gamora attacks or wards. Discard cards from the top of your deck until you discard an event. Then add that card to your hand. <laughs> okay, so um, it's a good, good uh, ally to have also can be committed as an energy resource, so uh, another way to get cards into your hand basically. You play this attack or sword and uh, discard cards, so you want to have a lot of events in your deck. Uh, the same as when playing with the hero Gamora. Gamora. So um, I think this ally uh, has the same flavor as the hero version of Gamora. So, Looks like a decent, decent uh, ally. Uh, then we have a reprint of uh, Athletic Conditioning. So I'm not going into that much detail, but uh, just saying that this really combos well with Drax's um, wanting to uh, not be stunned, for example. So you can uh, hero in, uh, action play that and get rid of the stun and still attack. And uh, last cards of the pre-build are the uh, basic uh, double resource cards. So that is the pre-build deck. It looks really interesting. So I'm just putting this over here so you can see the list. And uh, I think next we'll look at the obligation and the nemesis sets. So the obligation is memories of another life. So uh, give to the Drax player. You may flip to alter ego form, choose, exhaust your alter ego, remove memories of another life from the game. Uh, or you are stunned. If you are already stunned, discard cancer, discard this obligation. So nothing that special. So you either get stunned or you can flip and exhaust your alter ego to get rid of this. So nothing nothing in that interesting happening here. Uh, two boost icons, so not even three, so not that bad. Then, actually moving that now, uh, we have the Cult of Week Nemesis side scheme. Uh, so Cult of Week uh, comes into play with two towards per player. Uh, has two boost icons and each enemy gets plus two attack. So <laughs> this is actually, you really want to get rid of this because otherwise uh, the uh, villain and all the minions will hit for up. 
like a lot. <laughs> Plus two is quite high. Okay, and then uh, we have the really famous um, guy Utah the Destroyer. Never heard of this guy actually. Uh, one scheme, three attack, and five health. Uh, brute traded guard, retaliate one. Uh, Draxus Nemesis minion and three boost icons. So. Uh, Nobody knows who Yotat is, but uh, he hits like a truck and can take a decent punishing with 5 health, so also guard, which is annoying. So not really keen on seeing this guy get hit the table. Then uh, we have a attachment, a challenge accepted. So, challenge accepted is an attachment surge attached to the enemy with the highest attack, boss response after Drax deals 4 or more damage to attach enemy with a single attack, discard this card, and it, this gives plus 2 attacks, so this is a nasty attachment, but um, you just have a card that deals 4 damage. That, that will take care of this, but still annoying. Uh, then we have two copies of uh, the treachery. I will destroy you. When revealed Alter Ego, this card gets surged. Uh, when revealed Hero, Yotat uh, Destroyer attacks you with plus one attack. If no attacks were made this way, the villain attacks you. So, and this has two boost icons. So, I have to say that this had one boost icon. Uh, I will destroy you, uh, seems like uh, just an extra um, attack, treachery, nothing, nothing special, because those Nemesis minions rarely stick out for that long, you want to get rid of them fast, so I, I think most of the time this card will be the uh, villain attacking, so that is the Nemesis set. Nothing really, really special there. And the lastly, we look at the new other uh, aspect cards. So the aggression aspect card is Bring It. It's a zero cost event, max one per phase. Uh, hero action, draw one card for each minion engaged with you. And it can be committed as a energy resource. So I'm not probably ever playing this in any other scenario except uh, when playing uh, true solo except when playing alt ultron or the mutagen formula or well uh, this could actually be quite decent in the guardian uh, campaign because there are so many minions in that campaign so uh not really psyched about this card but it is what it is. I'm not the biggest aggression player either, so but still an interesting card to get your card draw up. Uh, the Justice card is Think Fast. It's a one cost event. Play only if your identity has Guardian traits. Hero action, take one damage, confuse the villain. So, uh, okay, you, you take one damage uh, just before you're going to Alter Ego, so you, the villain won't. Uh, so, okay, nothing really special. Pretty basic card. And uh, uh, then we have the leader's card regroup. It's a one cost support uh, tactic. Interrupt when an ally is defeated by an enemy attack, returning to its owner's hand instead of discarding it. Uh, if I'm interpreting this correctly, in multiplayer, if you have this in play, any ally could be returned to its owner's hand, so your teammates' allies will also be returned. So, actually, quite strong card for multiplayer. Uh, not that strong card for solo, maybe. Uh, and there's all, also the fourth interrupt when the round ends. This card is card. This can be committed as a mental resource, so... I. I feel this is a multiplayer card, so just not that interested in that as I play. So 
rarely in multiplayer. Uh, the last card is a reprint of Enhanced Physique. So we are seeing these uh, enhanced cards uh, come uh, now with this cycle. So uh, that is all the cards in the Drax uh, Hero Pack. I'm going to sleep them up, play a game with the pre-built deck and see how Drax functions in gameplay. So hope you guys like this um, Hero Pack Focus. Thanks for watching and until next time.